Inspector General, there's a text exchange between FBI lawyer Lisa Page and FBI agent Peter Strzok from August the 8th of 2016. In that text exchange, Lisa Page wrote, Trump's not ever going to become president, right with a question mark, and then right with a question mark and an exclamation point in case anybody uh, reading it may have missed the uh, point of her emphasis. Peter Strzok responded, no, no, he's not. We'll stop it. Do I have that text exchange right? Uh, you do. Now, Lisa Page was an FBI lawyer who worked on the Clinton email investigation? That's correct. Uh, did she also work on the Russia investigation? Uh, she did. How about the Mueller special counsel team? Uh, she did for a period of time. All right. So we're three for three on her working on the two most important bureau investigations in 2016 and beyond. Now, is this the same Lisa Page that Andy McCabe used to leak information to a news outlet? Um, she was his special counsel, and as we indicated in our earlier report, she was the individual through whom he provided that information. Wasn't there also a text about an insurance policy in case Trump won in a meeting in Andy's office? She was part of that text string, too, wasn't she? Correct. That was on August 15th. All right, so this August 8 text was not the only time FBI lawyer Lisa Page was able to use the text feature on her phone. This is the same Lisa Page who admonished the agent interviewing Hillary Clinton not to go into that interview loaded for bear because Clinton might be the next president. And it's the same Lisa Page who said Trump was loathsome, awful. The man cannot become president. Clinton just has to win and that Trump should go F himself. Now, most of those comments were before the Clinton investigation was over, and we are somehow supposed to believe that she did not prejudge the outcome of that investigation before it was over. She already had Hillary Clinton winning. I don't know how you can win if you're going to wind up getting indicted and or plead guilty or be convicted of a felony. So. Um, I think we understand the first half of that text pretty well. Um, she didn't want Trump to win, and she wanted Clinton to win. Now for the response. Senior FBI agent Peter Strzok wrote, no, no, he's not. We'll stop it. Now, I think this is the same Peter Strzok who worked on the Clinton email investigation. Do I have that right? Uh, that's correct. Same Peter Strzok who not only worked on the Russia investigation when it began, but was one of the lead investigators at the inception of the Russia Pro. Do I have the right Peter Strzok? That's my understanding. Now, is it the same Peter Strzok who was put on the Mueller special counsel team? Yes. All right. Same Peter Strzok. And this is not the only time he managed to find the text feature on his phone either. This is the same Peter Strzok who said Trump is an idiot. Hillary should win 100 million to zero. Now, Mr. Inspector General, that one is interesting to me because he's supposed to be investigating her for violations of the Espionage Act at the time he wrote that, in March of 2016. He's supposed to be investigating her for violations of the Espionage Act, and he can't think of a single solitary American that wouldn't vote for her for president. I mean, can you see our skepticism? This senior FBI agent not only had her running, he had her winning a hundred million to nothing. So what if they'd found evidence sufficient to indict her? What if they had indicted her? Is this the same Peters? He wasn't part of the interview of Secretary Clinton, was he? Uh, he was present for the interview. Huh. So four months before that interview where he was present, he's got her running and winning $100 million to zero. And it's the same Peter Strzok who wrote the bigoted nonsense of Trump. Trump's a disaster. I have no idea how destabilizing his presidency would be. He wrote, F Trump. Trump is an effing idiot. On the prospects of Trump winning, he wrote, this is an effing terrifying in addition to seeming to like uh, the F word, I think we have the same FBI agent, Lisa Page, and the same FBI agent, Peter Strzok, working on the Clinton email investigation, the Russia probe, and on Mueller's 
team. So we have the right text and we got the right people. I want to make sure we have the chronology right. July 5th, 2016, Comey announces no charges for Secretary Clinton, right? Correct. July 28th, 2016, the FBI initiates a counterintelligence investigation into Russia and the Trump campaign. And Strzok is not only on that Russia investigatory team, he's actually leading it. So that's three weeks after Clinton is exonerated by Comey, Strzok is leading an investigation into Russia and possible connections with the Trump campaign. That's on the 28th of July. Now on the, 20, on the 31st of July, three days after the Russia investigation began, Strzok wrote, damn, this feels momentous. The other one did too, but this was to ensure we didn't F things up. This one matters because it matters. And if you happen to not know how important it is, he went ahead and put matters in all caps in case you happen to not focus on the importance of why this matters. Now, her investigation was just to make sure they didn't F things up. This one, we're three days into it, Inspector General Horowitz, three days into an investigation, but this one really matters. I wonder what he meant by saying the purpose of the Clinton investigation was to make sure they didn't F things up, but the Russia investigation, nah, that one was different. That one really mattered. You know, it almost sounds, Inspector General Horowitz, like they were going through the motions with the Clinton investigation. But boy, they sure were excited about the Russian one. Then we get to August 6th. This is less than 10 days after the Russian investigation begins, and Page says, you are meant to protect the country from that menace. And then we get to August 8th, 2016, less than two weeks after the Russian investigation even began, the lead FBI agent says he will stop Trump from becoming president. This is two weeks into an investigation, and he's already prejudged the outcome. And we're somehow supposed to believe that that bias was not outcome determinative. I can't think of anything more outcome determinative than my bias against this person I'm investigating with only two weeks worth of investigating. I have already concluded he should not be the president of the United States. And then we get to August 15th. Just over two weeks into the Russia investigation, Strzok says, I want to believe the path you threw out, that there's no way he gets elected, but I'm afraid we can't take that risk. It's like an insurance policy. Mr. Inspector General, that is two weeks into an investigation, and he is talking about taking out an insurance policy because he can't fathom the target of his investigation possibly becoming the president. So I want to go back to the no, no, he's not going to be president. We'll stop it. What do you think the it is in that phrase, we'll stop it? Oh, I think it's clear from the context. It's we're going to stop um, him from becoming president. That's what I thought, too. Now, I wonder who the we is and the we'll stop it. Who do you think the we is? Well, I think that's probably subject to multiple interpretations. We'll see if we can go through a couple of them. Or the broader, or a broader group beyond that. I mean, it's hard to fathom a definition of we that doesn't include him. So we know he's part of we. You could assume that the person he's talking with is FBI attorney who also happens to be working on the Russian investigation. Mm -hmm. She may be part of the we. But I wonder, Inspector General, did you find any other FBI agents or FBI attorneys who manifest any animus or bias against President Trump? Uh, we did. How many? As, uh, we have found three additional FBI agents, as we detail in the report. And were any of them working uh, on the Russia investigation? Sorry, let, me, let me just correct. Two agents and one attorney. Two other agents, one other attorney. Were they working on either the Russia investigation or the Mueller probe? Uh, uh, I believe two of the three were, but I'd have to just double check on that. Okay. Now, Bob Mueller was named special counsel on May the 17th, 2017. One day later, Mr. Horowitz, one day later, 
Peter Strzok is back on his phone texting some more. For me, in this case, I personally have a sense of unfinished business. I unleashed it with the Clinton email investigation. Now I need to fix it and finish it. Fix what? Uh, well, there is outlined in the report what Mr. Strzok's explanation for Oh, I know what he was. I I'm asking our the, view I'm was, asking the guy who had a distinguished career in the Southern right. District of New York and had a distinguished career at the Department of Justice. Uh, would you rather cross-examine Peter Strzok on that explanation, or would you rather direct the examination on that explanation? Uh, probably cross-examine. That's what I thought. Uh, How about finish it? When he said, I unleashed it, now I need to fix it and finish it. What do you think he meant by finish it? I think in the context of the emails that occurred in August, and the prior August that you outlined, I think um, a reasonable explanation of it or a reasonable inference of that is uh, that he uh, believed he would use or potentially use his official authority to take action. But this is 24 hours into him being put on the Mueller probe. There's no way he possibly could have prejudged the outcome of the investigation. 20 Maybe he did. Maybe that's the outcome determinative bias that my Democrat friends have such a hard time finding. Uh, Inspector General Horowitz, if one of your investigators talked about Lisa Page and Peter Strzok the way they talked about Donald Trump, would you have left them on the IG investigation? Uh, no. Did you ever have an agent when you were a prosecutor with this level of bias? Uh, you know, as I've laid out here, I thought this was completely antithetical to the core values of the department and extremely serious. Can you speak up, please? I'm sorry. Um, I heard you. I, but you can say it where Mr. Nadler can hear you, too. I, um, you know, my view of this was that this was extremely serious, completely antithetical to the core values. In my personal view, having been a prosecutor and worked with FBI agents, I can't imagine FBI agents suggesting even that they might use their powers to um, investigate, frankly, any candidate for any office. Well, I can't either. And I'll, let me ask you this in conclusion. I think you've already you, you laid out in your opening that Peter Strzok's obsession with Donald Trump and the Russia investigation may have led him to take his eyes off of the Wiener laptop and uh, in a, in a uh, notably ironic way uh, caused Jim Comey to be a little bit later in sending those letters to Congress. So that is one example of outcome determinative bias. Uh, but I got to ask you, you used to, you used to be in a courtroom. You were on the side of the United States and you work for the Department of Justice. If someone is prejudging the outcome of an investigation before it ends, and someone is prejudging the outcome of an investigation before it even begins, <laughs> what is more textbook bias? than prejudging this investigation before it's over and this one before it begins. I am struggling to find a better example of outcome determinative bias than that. So what am I missing? Well, I think uh, certainly with regard to the Russia investigation you mentioned, as you know, we are looking at that in an ongoing way. Uh, with regard to the Clinton email investigation, I think as we lay out here and go through it, we looked at text messages, emails, documents to try and assess whether the specific decisions that we were asked to look at and then the ultimate prosecutorial decision were impacted by Strzok, Page, and the others' views. And what we ended up finding, particularly as to the prosecutor's decision, was um, that that was a decision they made exercising their discretion on their view of the policy, the law, and the facts as it was found. Um, we've laid that out, and in our view, we didn't find or see um, evidence that the prosecutors were impacted by that bias. Um, but as I mentioned in my opening statement, the idea here was to put out the facts um, for the public, members of Congress to see, and, um, and so that folks who want to take a look at those issues obviously can um, assess them themselves.
Well, my time is up. I hope one of my other colleagues will uh, explore that because uh, the explanation I've heard is that the failure to prosecute was predicated upon their belief that there was not sufficient evidence of intent on her behalf. And I don't know where in the hell you would go to find better evidence of intent than interviewing the person who actually was doing the intending. And when you make up your mind that you're not going to charge someone and you make up your mind that you need to not go in loaded for bear, and then you read the 302 and there's not a single damn question on intent, it is really hard for those of us who used to do this for a living to not conclude they'd made up their mind on intent before they even bothered to talk to the single best repository of intent evidence, which would be her. With that, I